Okay. Well, as I said, this is not going to be a typical HUNET training because most of you, many of you already know HUNET very well. So as I mentioned previously, I am very interested to see how you are receiving the files, the names of the files, where you have the files organized, how much data you have. So that's for me to learn about what you have accomplished so far. And then I would like to move over to your questions and your priorities. More on configuration, more on data cleaning, more on analysis, or directly to backlink. So um, uh, who would like to take the lead from your side? And actually, instead of me sharing the screens, it would be helpful if one of you could share your screens so that you can show me uh, what you are doing. And if you want, you could also go directly to some of your priority questions. Whenever we have these kinds of sessions with advanced users, I really would like you to take the lead because I, I don't know where you are with regard to your data management and your questions. So who on your side uh, would like to take over? Nobody is speaking. If you are speaking, then please unmute yourself. Uh, Zainala, uh, you're able to share your screen share, and share some of the files um, to show John the data that you're collecting or give a brief overview of the process now. I know okay. the screen. I have to I have to select who's going to be presenting. So who's that? Who's going to who wants to present? Maybe Zalalam? Zalalam. Um, I don't see that name on the list. How did he sign in? Is he user? Who is he? Is he user? Tufik? Swarthen? Don't? I have a user that doesn't have a name. Or Serafe. Serafe is the one? No, that's probably Zalalem. Zalalem. Okay. He is maybe user. His name is user. User. Yeah, user. Okay, okay. User, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so Zalalem, are you there? Can you speak? Yes, yes. Great. Okay. Great. Um, if you can permit Zalalem to share his screen. Yes, already there. Great. So the long you will have to say, I forget, share screen um, so that we can see your screen. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, until now, we have nine configuration specific to the sites. So I'm going to share you uh, each of maybe by selecting one of the configuration uh, so that John, you can see the contents of uh, our data. Uh, and I have a question. I see yeah. you have four configurations. Yeah. Uh, so you have you did you nine data for nine hospitals, is that right? Yes, yes, nine hospitals. Okay, and you have four configurations. Do you have more configurations or just the four? No, no, we do have actually eight configurations for yes. eight hospitals. Yes, uh, I know. We have yes, that's great, that's excellent. In addition, yeah. I have a recommendation. So maybe uh, Mikhail or maybe Zalana, well, you're speaking, maybe somebody can take some notes with some recommendations that we will come to later. I see you have eight configurations here. I would recommend in addition, having one called Ethiopia All. In other words, we can have one configuration specific and customized for each of the hospitals that can be configured very closely to the needs of that hospital. But we can also have a national configuration. With a national configuration, we can analyze data from any hospital. So we'll talk about that later, how to create a national configuration. Can you please continue? 
sorry, you said for the national. Yes, uh, later, later, I will show you how to make a national configuration. Okay, okay, thank you. So let us uh, open one of the configurations. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, I can show you this one for Juma. Uh, Juma is one of the hospital in Ethiopia. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe I can modify this laboratory to show you the contents of the. Uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, overall uh, uh, configuration. So Ethiopia, Jimma, uh, the code is 05. We can use also letters, but so far we have been using just numbers. Uh, antibiotics, uh, we have list of antibiotics, which is specific to that hospitals. Mm -hmm. They don't have actually Vitek. Uh, uh, they are using only disk method. The test method is disk. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. The location, the location, uh, we already got information from HMI department. So, of sir, that. yeah, sir, HMI. Uh, sir, can you please go back to the antibiotics? Antibiotics, okay. Okay, cancel. Cancel. Okay, antibiotics. You want this one? Um, Yes, yes, the antibiotics. Yeah. So uh, I think most of you have seen this before, but it's not. On the left, we see all of the unit possibilities for this MSC. We test about 300 antibiotics and CLSI 2020. On the right, is a list of antibiotics for your hospital, for your testing, for your local needs. I do see some problems here. <laughs> Um, for example, amoxicillin. There are a lot of drugs here that are not valid drugs. Amoxicillin is not a valid drug for CLSI or you cast uh, testing by distribution. So amoxicillin is not a valid antibiotic. Uh, Cefazolin is valid. It's not so common. Cefapine zidibactam. It's a new drug. I don't know if you have those discs. Carbenicillin is a very old drug. Can you go down, so you have 47 drugs on the right. Can you go down on the list? Go down on the list. Yeah. Yeah, just past carbenicillin. Okay, a little more, a little more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. So far from acetyl, I don't think you have that. Clostacillin is not valid. Um, uh, go down further. Let's just go down to the bottom. Um, if you're cycling, if you can mention to, to, no, no, to the bottom. Well, like piperacillin. Nobody tests piperacillin. People test piperacillin plus tazobactam, but not piperacillin by itself. Go down to the very bottom, the end of the antibiotic list. Where? Where? The bottom of the list. The end of the list. This is vancomycin. End. Bottom. Yes. Yeah. More? More. Good. Yes, okay. So, in short, most of these antibiotics are perfectly fine. Some of the antibiotics, I do not think that you are testing. If you are testing them, it is wrong. Some of these are not valid CSI drugs. Some of them, like amoxicillin, never had breakpoints. Some of them, like carbenicillin, it's an old drug that you can no longer purchase. Okay. Before we continue, are there any questions on this screen? Yeah, maybe I can ask you one question on this antibiotic list. Yes. Okay. Uh, some of the antibiotics uh, that belongs to LSI guideline uh, are not available in the list. So we are trying to create a user-defined antibiotics. Okay. Uh, that is not, so that is not yeah. correct. Um, every, every official UCAST and CSI and FDA antibiotic is on this list. However, 
sometimes people have trouble finding it. For example, there is a drug called cotrimoxazole. But cotrimoxazole is not the official name. The official name, I see it on your list, is shermethipim sulfur. There is another drug, but the generic name is amoxicillin clavulinic acid. There's a drug, Sinusid. These are brand names. The chemical name of the generic name is Pernipristin Dalfopristin. So you tell me that there's certain drugs that are missing on the left, but there shouldn't be. Can you give me an example of an antibiotic that is missing? Uh, normally, I cannot remember right now, but uh, I will send you some of the antibiotics later on. Yeah. After this, I cannot hear yeah. anything. Oh, maybe uh, there is some complication. But someone can okay, proceed for today and uh, well, okay, I'll continue. Um, yeah, also Zalalem is uh, joining or yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, so maybe uh, let me continue. My... Okay, yes. so uh, we are taking note. Mikhail, do you want to designate someone to take notes? Okay. Will you take notes? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're recording oh. the call. We're recording the meeting too. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to take some notes as well. Thank you. Okay. So I had the point that some of these are not valid antibiotics. He had the point that some drugs they want are missing from the list on the left. That is not correct. Uh, the list on the left has all of the official antibiotics. Uh, there are some research drugs, new drugs that are not on the list, but that's a different question for research. Okay, yes, so I so I can John, John, maybe you have some questions. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, azithromycin. Uh, I cannot find it from the list. Uh, so azithromycin. Azithromycin. Yeah, can you please go to the search box? Go to the search box. No, 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 no. no stop moving the mouse. And there is a box there that says search. Please. Okay. The search. Mm -hmm. No. Well, okay. So unless you're nice and it begins with the letter E. Unless you're nice and does not begin with the letter A. You're in the A area. Can you please go down to the area beginning with the letter E? Mm -hmm. That means A uh, there. <laughs> You're in the search. E? Yeah. Are you looking for azithromycin or erythromycin? Both of them are there. Okay. So that is azithromycin. Now inside of the search box, type E R Y. E R Y, no. You have to get rid of the A and the Z. No. In the search box, it says, a, well, uh, uh, I want to understand. Are you looking for azithromycin? Or, I think this one, this one, this one. Oh, okay. Well, it is there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are also some other antibiotics, uh, but I cannot find them from the list. But usually what I can do, uh, I will create my own by using the option user defined. Yes. But the problem, the problem is, you know, there are breakpoints, right? Yes. Uh, if you create a user -defined... Hold on, hold on, I understand. So you're saying there's a problem with the user-defined antibiotics. That is correct. With the user-defined yeah. antibiotics, you have to put the breakpoints yourself. The yeah. problem is you don't need the user-defined antibiotics. For every CSI and new test antibiotic, it is on this list. If you can't find it, we'll find it. It is, it is there. Okay? So, so please send us a list of the antibiotics that you cannot find. Okay. In addition to that, in addition to that, you know, the MIC option, the concentration or the VITEC, yes. uh, we have at PHI. Uh, so we cannot actually uh, enter the amount of concentration in Hune. Uh, the reason is uh, most of the time they provide greater than something, greater than something. So yes. I don't know what to do on that. So that is, we are using only the test interpretation. I understand. That is not a problem. But let's talk about that later when we go to data entry. Hune, 
no problem with MIC data. Okay, so when we get to data entry, I will show you how to manually enter the MIC or the new test results. Of course, if it's from the Vitec, we also want to do backlink, because if we do backlink, you don't have to do double data entry. So we will cover both issues, the manual entry of MIC values and also backlink, but let's talk about that later when we get to data entry and we get to backlink. Okay. Any other questions on the screen? Okay. Good. I, I have two points. Um, on, the, on the right side of the screen, can you go to the top of the list? I want to see the beginning of the list. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Up, top, top. So here I see that you started in alphabetical order. And the case in Amatisola and Ampicilla was a thermosin. Okay, so right now it's in alphabetical order. Can you go down to the end of the list? Go to the very end of the list. Yeah. Good. So here, it was in alphabetical order, but then you added more drugs. You added amicacin, cephalotaxin, daptomycin. That's fine. We added the three drugs and it went to the end of the list. I want to show you that you can change the list. Please click on amicacin. Well, let's click on the three. Select amicacin, cephalotaxin, and daptomycin. Right now, click on amicacin. Cephalotaxin, where is it? It's right there. Click on that, no, 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 don't move. <laughs> no, that, no, no, down to the bottom of the list. Go to the bottom of the list. The bottom. Okay, the bottom is this one. Yeah, yes. Bottom, yes. Click on amicacin. You want this one? Yes, click there. Now click on move up. Click yeah, on... I can, we can... This one, yeah. Yes, good. So I want to make sure you know how to do that. So you do. You click on move down. Move down, yeah. Yes, move down. And we'll just leave it there. We'll just leave it there. So uh, people ask me, what is the best order for the antibiotics? Should I put alphabetical? Should I put... And the answer is it doesn't really matter. Put the order that you want it to be in. But I do have a recommendation. If they, if they have a, a large... If they have, a, if they have the, the, the laboratory notebook, and if the laboratory notebook says penicillin, oxycillin, erythromycin, in that, you should put the same sequence. The data entry, in the, the data entry for who that will be easier if they enter the data in the same sequence. So if, if you have a sequence on paper, penicillin, oxycillin, erythromycin, then put the same sequence into who that. It just makes it easier to avoid transcription error. You know, if you see antibodies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the screen, it should be antibodies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So if you're doing manual data entry, put the sequence that makes the data entry easier. Okay. If you're using backlink, it doesn't matter because if you're using backlink, you do not do manual data entry. But for people doing manual data entry, you can use move up and move down to make the sequence easier for the data entry person. Okay. That's one point I had. Can you now click on panels? Click on panels. Sorry? At the bottom of the screen, there's a button that says panels. Down to the left. No, no. On the left side of the screen, on the left side of the screen, you see the word breakpoints? What is it? In this, in this. It's on the screen, on the left, on the bottom. No, 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 I don't see it anymore. No, no, stop. Stop right there. It's good. Okay. You see the word is at the bottom of this screen. You see the word breakpoints? Down a little more. Down a little more. After all the antibiotics. After the search box. Down. <laughs> Do you see the word breakpoints? Yeah, this is, this one? Yes, that's it. To the right, the word panels. Please click on the word, no, not that we don't want the breakpoints, we want the panels. 
Uh, they'll click on, on yeah, we get rid of that. Post, post. Now click on panels. Yeah. Good, I am very glad to see that you completed this. So yeah. the purpose of this screen is to make the life of the data entry easier. For example, for staff who are talking, we do not test all of the antibiotics. For staphylococcus, is it from is good, sofoxetine is good, clomphenicol. So I am happy. I think you did a good job on this. Um, uh, I think streptococcus pneumonia. Streptococcus pneumonia usually is different drugs, but in gram negative, I see amicacin, augmented ampicillin. So um, at first glance, this looks relatively good. Okay. Of course, you can use this. Better. You can optimize this if if they are if they um. Where's an example? Sufoxin. Um. Oh, this is a simple example here. Here on the left side of the screen, you see carbamazepin. Sorry. On the left side of the screen, you see carbamazepin. Carbamazepin. It's about halfway down the list. No, 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 no. Stay on the, no. Do not leave the screen if I don't say. Click on panels again. Okay. Click on panels. Okay, now we wait. There's a little bit of a delay. So, in the list of antibiotics here, do you see the antibiotic carbenicillin? You see, the first antibiotic on the list is amicacin. Yes? This one, antibiotic sequence, you mean? No, 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 no. Do not move to the right. On the left side, there's a column. The first column says amicacin. You see that? Yes. Yes, of course. Below that, it says amoxicillin. Below that, it says carbenicillin. About half, you see carbenicillin. You see C A R B. Do you see Sofoxetine? I'm just, I'm just reading the list. Yeah, this one. The, well, the next one, Carbenicillin. Okay, this one, okay. Yes, that's it. So I'm just looking at that, and there are no check boxes. So you see, the, nothing is checked for Carbenicillin. In other words, this drug is on the list, but you're not testing it. Yes, of course, yeah. Therefore, you can probably remove the antibiotic because it's not an antibiotic that you are testing. Okay. So, that, so in short, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I don't want to say it's perfect, but this is pretty good. You have the correct idea. This allows the data entry person to enter certain drugs for certain organisms. So I am happy that you fill this in. So please click on OK. So I see what I'm going to see. Now let's click on OK. Yeah. Click on OK. Good, perfect. Click on OK again. This one? Okay, maybe uh, this option, this option. John, yes? can you see yes? this option? The CSI, yes. Yeah. Yes, I was expecting all the antibiotics uh, that belongs to CLA site 2003. But here, uh, we are also looking at other antibiotics, for example, from uh, new... I understand, I understand. I can explain. Yeah. Um, it's something that maybe we will change. There are people who test official CLSI drugs with official CLSI breakpoints. That's normal. There are people who do the CLSI method on other antibiotics. So, for example, as you commented, there's a drug called biomycin. There are no official CLSI breakpoints, but people can test it. If they test it, there are no official breakpoints, but they can still do the test. So a lot of times researchers will do that. So I so I really see we can make that a little bit less confusing. If the, if the person says CLSI, we should be able to give them two options. Option one is show them the complete list. That's what Hunet does now. But we can also give them a short list of the official antibiotics. So I 
in the future to make the life easier for people. Um, if they choose suicide, we will give them two choices. Suicide with the official suicide antibiotics or suicide with all of the antibiotics. That would make it less, that would, that would make it more convenient. That would make it easier for people. Uh, I agree with you that if somebody says suicide, it would be easier to see only the suicide. Um, let's see, I also want to make a general comment. Uh, I personally wrote from that in DOS and in Windows for about 20 years. I've had an excellent new programmer, Adam, for about the last 10 years, and we're modernizing everything. And that's the big difference between Unit 5.6 and Unit 2018 and Unit 2020. So we took a lot of time and efforts to modernize. During the modernization efforts, we did not change the screens very much. So the reason that the screen is like this is because this is the way that I did this many years ago. I want to make this better by doing what I just said, CLSI selection, CLSI antibiotics. I wanted to do that for a long time, but it was more important for us to modernize the software. We are now finishing next week the final step in modernizing the software. So for the last 10 years, that functionality has not changed very much because the uh, last, last seven years, that functionality has not changed very much because we have been modernizing the software. Now that we have finally finished the modernization, I can finally start doing new things. One of the new things is this with the antibiotics. So in the next several months, we'll start to see a lot of new features. Um, so I guess that's just a general comment. Your suggestion is a very good suggestion. I've had that idea for many years, but I was not able to work on that idea because the modernization was a bigger priority. Now with the modernization finished, we can go back and we can start adding new features. Yeah, okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, I am finished with this screen. If you want, we can continue with locations. Okay, this one. Yes. Great, perfect, yes. So, one comment to begin with is that the word location just simply means location. If you are a hospital, the location usually means the name of the ward or the name of the clinic. You know, emergency room, intensive care unit, diabetes clinic. So if you are a hospital, the location is usually the name of the ward or the name of the clinic. But if you are a national reference laboratory, the location might be the name of the city or the name of the hospital. Or if you are an animal laboratory, the location might be the name of the farm, or the name of the market, or it might be the name of the food, or it might be the name of the river, if you are taking water samples. So the word location means different things to different people. If you're a hospital, location usually means water clinic. If you're at the national level, it's usually about the city or the, or the hospital that sends you. So that's one general comment. Now, uh, I see what you're doing. I see stroke, I see TB unit, I see medicine, female medicine. Now, yes, this is correct. This looks like a hospital configuration. I see that you have the name, you have a short code. It's all of the same hospital, that's perfect. The two columns on the right are not necessary, but they are very useful. The, two, the three columns on the left, you put whatever you want. The two columns on the right are to introduce local and national and international standardization. For example, on the left, um, well, uh, the ones on the left are very obvious, but for example, on the left, I see ophthalmology. You know, at the national level, they don't really care about ophthalmology. You know, usually they'll just call it surgery. So the two columns on the right are to help to standardize things, just to make it easier for the national person to look at inpatient versus outpatient. At the national level, they do not care about five south and five north, and medicine one, medicine two, medicine three. At the national level, they do care about inpatient versus outpatient. Maybe they care about medicine versus surgery. Okay. 
Uh, for example, I do see an example. Can you please go to all maxil 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 You see all maxil On the left side of the screen, one of the rows is a location called all maxil facial. Do you see that? Not yet. Maybe I don't know. No, it was there. I did that. Well, okay. At the top of the screen, yeah, stop, 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 stop. Uh, we lost it. Oh, stop, stop. Okay. On the left side, no, stop. Do not move the mouse. The mouse is perfect. No, no, no. Don't move the mouse. Go back to where it was. Go back again. Okay. The last one, you mean? The... No, no, no. Go, go down again. Go down, go down, go down. Okay, great. That's perfect. Take your finger off of the mouse. Do not, do not move the mouse. Um, good, good. Stop right there. Do not move the mouse. Okay. Row number three. Row number three says all maxillofacial. facial. Yeah, this one, yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm happy with column one and column two and column three. I'm happy with column five. It says impatient. Yes. I'm not so happy with column four. The department says OMFS. I agree that OMFS as the department is useful for that hospital, but you already have OMFC in column two. So my recommendation in general is that in column four, don't put OMFS because OMFS is not going to be useful to EPHI. At the national level, it would be better to say just surgery, S-U-R. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Because the, three, the three columns on the left, it's good to customize those for local purposes. For local use, just they call it this, we call it this. The two columns on the right, it's easier for the national person if it is standardized. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe John, uh, yes? uh, you know the difficulty to standardize all the sites in Ethiopia is uh, the departments or maybe the wards. Uh, when you move to one site to another site, it is totally uh, different. So uh, we are trying to customize for them specific to them. Uh, but finally, while we are trying to combine the whole data. Uh, yes. We will be uh, using uh, uh, to the maximum level uh, all the data so what we have without avoiding uh, any uh, variables. That is sure. our intention. Yes. So usually for a na for when, when you know is going to be used by one facility for their own local purposes, I recommend optimizing everything for that facility. And that's what you are doing. You're optimizing for, for that facility, which is great. However, at the national level, it might nice have some standards. So I would like usually in the art columns one, two, and three. I recommend columns and three do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Columns five, I suggest introducing some general national standards. I especially care about column five. Uh, at the national level, at, at the national level, inpatient versus outpatient is very important. At the national level, medicine, surgery, pediatrics is, is less important um, because, you know, because of the problems of standardization. So I do, I am glad and I am very happy that column five, you have completely standardized. Column five is exactly what I would have done. In, out, in, out, it makes it nice and easy at the standardized level. Column four, as you pointed out, it, there's a little bit of a conflict here. We're trying to optimize it for the laboratory. We're trying to have national standards. What you have done is we've optimized it for the laboratory, which is great for the lab. It also means it's going to be less useful at the national level. For example, at the national level, they don't have one code for surgery. They have one code for surgery, ophthalmology, maxillofacial. So, and I think that's reasonable. At the national level, many countries do inpatient versus outpatient. Mm -hmm. 
At the national level, most people don't do medicine, surgery, obstetrics. Um, uh, if they want to, they want it standardized. Well, you have here, it's not standardized, so this will make it more difficult to standardize the department at the national level, and that's okay. Most countries do not most countries do not do a lot of analyses using the department. They do analyses with inpatient, outpatient. Okay. What we have done here is reasonable. You don't have to change this. It does mean that this is well optimized for the laboratory use, but it does make it more difficult at the national level to analyze this column. But this column is usually not analyzed at the national level very much. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, do you have any more questions on this screen? And any more questions? If you have no more questions. John, I have a logistical question. This is Fern. I'm typing some of your recommendations and comments in the chat screen. I don't know if people are seeing that. No, no, or is no. it okay? We can save uh, you for later. I have to go open. Okay. Yes, I can see the chat now. Okay, yes, good. Okay, so, um, so great. I, so there's also, a, this is the kind of discussion that's good to have at the beginning. Because if you have a lot of data, uh, you don't want to change the data. If you already have two years of data, and we change something in the middle, then you have a different problem. Then you have trouble comparing your old data and your new data. Sometimes it's important to do that. Sometimes people make mistakes on these potencies. So in that case, I try to fix the old data. So if you change in the middle of a project, then you have to, to decide. You have one of two situations. If you change in the middle of the project, then either the old data and the new data will be different. And as long as you know what the differences are, you can work with that. Or sometimes what you do is you fix the old data. So there are many cases where I do help the people to fix the old data. Well, sometimes people have manual typing. They'll, they'll have, for example, medicine one, medicine two, medicine three. But some people would put M1. Some people would put med one. Some people put medicine one because they didn't need codes. So sometimes people are just doing free text. And in those cases, sometimes we take the time and the effort to clean up the old data. So you just need to make the decision. I, I think you can continue exactly with what you are doing because you have the old data. It does mean that for inpatient outpatient, there's no problem. That we did standardize very well. I'm glad you did that. For the department, with the way you have it now, it's going to be more difficult at the national level. And that's okay if it is not a variable you plan to analyze. If you want to standardize the department at the national level, we're going to have to fix the old data. And I can show you on a different call. I use access. We cannot fix it in Winnet. I put the data in access, and then I just fix it. I just do a replace to standardize it. Okay. Can we have an additional comment? Um, for I'm unmuted. I presume she will unmute if there's a comment. If not, I'm happy with the screen, so let's continue. Um, so let's continue. Good. Before you speak, there, there are two more features here, one called data fields, one called alerts. They're both important features, but most people don't change them. Like the alerts, it's a very valuable analytical feature. I mean, it is 190 alerts, but you don't have to change the alerts. If you want to, you can change the alerts, but you don't have to. Uh, that, so most people do not change the alerts. If you want to change the alerts, we'll talk about that later. The data fields, most people do not change the data fields. Because you're happy it, when you define a new laboratory in it, when it gives you a nice list of patient, location, specimen, organism, microbiology questions. Most people are happy with that list. That's the list that we see here. So most people don't change this list. But some people do, and there are good reasons to change the list. For example, Wunet doesn't ask the grand thing, because the grand thing is really for analysis. But if you use UNET for clinical reporting, a lot of people do want the grand stain. So the purpose of this feature called data fields is to add additional fields that you want, the name of the doctor, the name of the disease, the name of the, the county, the province. So these would be reasons to add more questions. 
There are also reasons to remove questions. For example, if you work in an animal laboratory, you do not need the animal's social market. You do not need the animal's date of birth. Uh, if you are a food, a food laboratory, you don't need to know the food's date of birth. I don't want to know how old my hamburger is. And the, the food's gender, I don't want to know if my hamburger is male or female. So there are good reasons to add questions if, if you want to add those. It's also a good reason to remove questions. So I'm sure many people don't change the list, but there are good reasons to change the list. So that's the purpose of this feature called data fields. I'll stop right there. Now do you have questions about this feature? Maybe. Many people don't have questions about the feature because they don't change it. So that's up to you. Do you have any questions about the data field feature? Just see color two has arrived. I don't know who that is, but okay. Okay, I'm going to can you go down to the bottom? No, 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 don't touch on anything yet. Uh, uh, you can see the list there, country, laboratory origin. I want to see the bottom of the list. Go to the end of the list. The bottom. And, yeah, this yeah, this one. Yes, good. And I see that you made no changes. This is the normal standard who that list we give to everybody. So for this laboratory, you didn't change it. You just used the normal list that who has. Do you have any questions on this list? Yeah, maybe, uh, uh, John. Yes? Uh, uh, this is an alarm. Uh, maybe I want to ask you if I have uh, additional variables out of this list, uh, maybe I can I can include by using the model. I mean, modify list. Uh, then there is user defined here. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Yeah. So let's modify list. So on the left of this list, you see many predefined Hunet categories and Hunet data fields. For example, on the left, I see the date of birth, I see the race, the ethnicity, the patient city, the patient state. I see a long list of predefined optional, or a predefined Hunet list. In the upper left, can you please click on clinical information? In the upper left, click on clinical information. That's, yes, that's it. Click there. So now you can see there's the diagnosis, the operation, the name of the doctor, the name of the surgeon. So these are optional, predefined, hornet data fields. You can choose from these. Or, as you said, you can do user-defined. For example, if you want to keep track of the... If you want to keep track of the patient, the name of the patient's father, that's not a new net, but you can be user defined to add it as a locally relevant useful field. So, if you have an okay. example, what is an example of something you might want to add? Maybe within, within even the list, I have uh, one question. For example, uh, prior antibiotic therapy, is, it is already in the list, uh, but it is actually a dichotomous uh, variable. That means a kind of yes or no, right? No, in fact, it's empty. It, it's some, so for, for this one, um, I can, uh, let's see. Can, can you double click on that? Double click on prior antibiotic therapy. Yes. It's now on the list. It's on the list. Okay. Good. Click on OK. And OK, yeah. Good. So and now it appears at the go to the bottom of the screen on the left. Yeah, it is a code list. You see? Click on it. Yeah. It is. Um, also, you see, um, right. So you have, we have added the field. But we have not, the field, yeah. We have not added valid values. So it's simply free text. It's a 10 character field. You see the length is 10. You can make that short, one or two, if you want to be honest, or you can make it 30 or 50 if you want to write out something from text. Okay, maybe I, maybe to add some questions on this one, uh, let's say the patient has been given more than two antibiotics. Uh, so how can I enter these, the whole antibiotics? 
Let's change the length. Let's change the length to 30. Let's change the length to 30. You see the number yeah, you can make, yeah, you can make this one actually 30, but during data analysis, I don't know how can we separate this antibody because uh, UNET does not allow you uh, to write separately in a, a different field. Uh, so how can we separate them, you know, finally? Okay, yes, there is a way of, um, uh, I'm going to give a short answer now, but we can give a longer answer later when we eventually get to data analysis on this call or a different call. Um, okay. So who does them with the use of wildcards? For example, if, if somebody writes here, AMP, comma, SIP, comma, SXT, when you get to data analysis, then you can say, I want to see therapy, asterisk, SIP, asterisk. So we will look for the word SIP somewhere in the middle of the, in the, in, in the, middle of the text. Okay. So, that, so there are ways. Um, that's one general comment. So uh, if, you, if you can define for me exactly what your needs are, I can give comments on the best way to do that. And a few additional things. Uh, a lot of people do use HUNET to analyze their HUNET data, obviously. People are HUNET data, and use HUNET to analyze the data. But HUNET files are also compatible with Excel, Access, SAS, SPSS. So there are people who use HUNET to do some of their analyses, but they use other spreadsheet or database or statistical software for other analyses. So, for example, HUNET does not do logistic regression. HUNET does not do chi-square. But people can take their HUNET files and put it in a statistical software to do those things. So there will be examples where there might be something that you want to do, and the data are in HUNET, but HUNET doesn't give you the analysis option. You know, um, another little secret, Microsoft gets paid more than I do. <laughs> So Microsoft is a big company with a lot of software, with a lot of capabilities. So of course, they're going to have a lot of things that HUNET is not able to do. For the very important ones, we try to put them into HUNET. So in, in answer to your question, there are some things that you want to do that you can do with HUNET, and I will show you how to do that. But there's certain things that are in HUNET, you put into HUNET, you type them into HUNET, but HUNET does not do the analysis that you want. In that case, you can use a different software that you know, SQL Server, Access, Excel, uh, the info to analyze it. So then I can show you later how HUNET can be used by these other softwares. Okay. So maybe one final question regarding this uh, window. I just, I just realized I should not be eating <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> Okay. I do not have COVID. I just have peanuts in my throat. Um, uh, okay. uh, maybe. And I, I'm maybe. Sorry, another, another important comment. Is sometimes, people when are start, sometimes when people are starting their projects, they are overly optimistic. Sometimes they want to say, I want to know the therapy. I want to know the name of the doctor. I want to know the outcome. Did the patient die? I want to know the disease. These are all great research questions. But sometimes they're not very realistic. So sometimes people go to the moment they answer, they put a lot of questions. Does the patient have a ventilator? Does the patient have a catheter? If you were doing a research study with a research protocol, yes, of course you can collect everything that people would need to collect. For routine data, however, a lot of times the information is not available. The laboratory does not know the diagnosis. Or the request form simply says fever. Fever is not a diagnosis. Uh, so regarding the prior antibiotic therapy, in a research context, there can be great value in that. But then you should think about a nicely designed protocol and survey and answers to standardize the responses and get agreement from the data collectors to collect it and to enter it in a standardized way. What I've seen, however, many times is there's a column called diagnosis. People on the list, like you are doing, people put diagnosis. And then when I try to analyze the data and I look at the diagnosis column, it's empty. They didn't enter it in. Or they entered it in 20% of the time. Somebody wrote the word fever. <laughs> Somebody wrote the word SEV. 
Somebody put FUO, fever of unidentified origin. So sometimes, so if you want these additional data fields, you do need to think about a group. Is it practical? Is it realistic? Is the laboratory going to have these things? And if the answer is yes, then how are we going to standardize the coding for it? So uh, the idea from a research perspective of prior antibody therapy, I like it from a research perspective, but are people going, is the laboratory people going to know the answer? Uh, are they going to enter it? Um, so this is a general comment. When people add additional fields, sometimes they add additional fields for very good reasons. Some, however, sometimes people add additional fields because they're overly optimistic. They say, oh, we're going to get everything, and when we get to the data, nobody has it. So that's just a general comment. Okay. Okay, uh, okay. that's great, by the way. Uh, maybe... Uh... For the one, before we leave this one, you, you see on the left, lower left, you have clicked on prior antibody therapy. On the right, you see it says human animal food. You see those three checkboxes, human animal food. Yes, remove the checkbox for food. Yeah, this one. No, not for animal. Okay, so prior antibody therapy is a relevant question if you're dealing with humans. It is a relevant question if you're dealing with living animals. It's not a relevant question if you're dealing with food. The food's already dead. <laughs> so the purpose of this, uh, let me get a better example. On the left side of the screen, go to the top of the list. Go to the top of the list. Yeah. Click on first name. Click on first name. Yeah. So you can see in the lower right hand corner, first name is a human question. We do not need the first name of the animals. We do not need the first name of the food. Exactly. On sex, on the left side of the screen, click on sex. That question is for human and animals. It's not a question for food. So I just, it's a small feature, but if you start working with food and animals, I, you know, it's nice to know what the purpose of this feature is. Okay, that's all I had to say on that. What was your next question? Hello? Yes, I am here. Okay. Uh, if you add additional variables, uh, uh, in addition to the one what we have in the unit, uh, yes. the variables uh, will be placed at the end of uh, the list. Uh, even if, if you use move up and move down, these options will not work on the additional variables. I don't know, maybe you have uh, some trick on that. It, it does work, but there's a trick. It doesn't yeah, it doesn't work. It does for example, work. yeah. For it example, this one. Yes. This one. Uh, actually, this is from the list of units. But if I add one variable, uh, I cannot uh, actually uh, use these two functions on that. It works, but when you come to the data, uh, you will see them at the last, uh, at the end of the data. I don't know why the reason. I, I know, I know why. Um, let's see. I want to. I don't want to change the. Oh, okay. Before we do anything, can you click on OK? Click on OK. Okay. I want to change the laboratory code. I don't want to change anything you have. Okay. You see the laboratory code is zero five. Yeah. Let's just change it to something else. Zero, zero, test, just change it, 11, perfect, perfect. Click on save. Save? Yes? Yeah, save, yeah. Say, uh, yes, we're changing the code. We're changing it from zero, 05 to 11. Say yes. Okay. Now it's changed. Good, good. And now we can make changes. I, I didn't want to make changes in the real one. Click on data fields. Okay, um, click on modify list. Yeah, and then let us create one new variable here. We we'll click on modify list. I just want to do a, a few more. Click on modify list. Yeah. Okay, and okay, double click on patient city. Uh, on the lower, lower left, down, down. No, 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 no. 
There are two boxes on the left. You're in the upper box for data categories. There's a box for lower fields. So patient, what ID or? On this screen, on the lower left area, the lower left, there's a big box that says data fields. Okay. Left, 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 left. Here, here. That's it, that's it, yes. Do you see patient city? Patient study is? City, city, patient city. This one or this one? The third one, city, C-I-T-Y. Okay. City, yes. Double click on that. Yeah, it's coming. Good. Okay, now go, now uh, in the upper left, click on microbiology. Upper left, click on microbiology. Yes. Double click on gram stain. Gram stain. Okay. Please double click. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Now let's do user defined. Double click on user defined. Yeah. Okay, and call this test, just call it test, T E S T. T S test. You want to like this? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. On the description, type the word test. Capital T small E S T. Test. No, A, the uh, types of test. Yeah, yeah, anything is fine. Type of test, perfect, perfect. Click on OK. Now it's coming, yeah. Fine, click on OK. OK. Click OK. Yeah. On the left side of the screen, go to the bottom. On the left side of the bottom. So you are correct, they're all at the bottom of the screen. Okay. I want to show you a detail that you probably did not notice. Okay. You click, click on Gramstein. I'm staying, okay. Yes. So you see on the right it says section is microbiology. Yeah. You see section is microbiology. You see that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, on the left side of the screen, click on patient city. The left side of the screen, click on patient city. Yeah, it says origin. Great. Let's change that. Let's change that to location. No, no, no. Um, no, patient city. Patient city, yeah. And it says origin. Yeah. Change the word origin. So here you see the names of the different boxes inside of the data entry screen. So click on location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Now on the lower left, click on types of test. So oh, if, it says other. Right, and other, and other is the very last section in the data entry program. And that's why you see the thing at the end. The thing at the end, because it's staying inside of the other box. Can you now change, the, change other to microbiology? Other to microbiology, good. Yeah. Now click on OK. Not yet, not yet, I made a mistake. Um, types of tests. Click on type of test on the well, it's already clicked. Um, click on move up. I, I told you to do something. Click back on data fields. I want to go back. But move up, move up, move up. Move up, move up. Yeah. Put it before data lactamase. Sorry? Move up. Wait. Uh, perfect. That, that's perfect. Just leave it there. No, that's too far. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. okay. You see now, now it is located between the specimen type and isolate number. You see, type of test is located between specimen type and isolate number. Yes. Uh, click on the isolate number. Isolate number. Yes. Yeah. So isolate number. You see on the right is in the hidden. It's a hidden question. Yes. So we can move. Let's change it to microbiology. Uh huh. Click on microbiology. Okay. Now click on specimen type. Upper left. Uh -huh. Specimen type. 
uh, no, this one or this? That's it. So that's in the specimen box. So when you do move down there, two things. Which box do you want it to be in? And where do you want it to be inside of the box? So please click on OK. And then click on Save. And then go to Data Entry. Okay. And then click on Save. Okay. I'm just going to create a new file. Okay. So now, okay, maybe. Um, look at types of tests. Look in the microbiology box. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Right. Great. So the problem is the move up, move up, the move up, move down work. However, you have to change the box. <laughs> So, you, so because you did not change the box, the, the, can you go down to the bottom of the left? I want to see the end of the data entry form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but, but for the other people on the call, I want to show them what it looks like. I want to see the other section. So go to the bottom of this form, yes. Go to the end. No, I, I want to see the other, I want to see the comment, I want to see one more, well, it's, I can't see it because it's below the bottom of my screen, but after the last antibiotic, you see the other section. So the other section is going to have prior antibiotic therapy, the gram stain, or not, okay, well, it's gram stain microbiology. So, so basically, you have to change two things. You do the move up and move down, but you also have to change the box where the question will appear. Okay. Is that clear? Good. Yeah. So let's read data entry and go back. Well, uh, okay. Well, you don't have to. Do you have any other questions? Oh, no, I, I, have, a, I have an answer. Okay. Let's go back to data fields. Click on exit. Okay. And then file modify laboratory. Yeah. You want this one, right? And then, yes, and then data fields. Go down to the bottom of the left. I want to see the end of the list of data fields. Go to the end of the bottom of the left. Okay. And for example, click on patient city. And click on code list. Yeah. So right now there is no code list, meaning it is a free text field. The person will simply type the name of the city, they'll simply type whatever they want. Uh, but we can also give them a list. Can you, can you click on the second option, use codes from the table? And for city number one, type Addis Ababa. And then for the code, Print AA or others, you know, you call it whatever you want. It's just something short and easy. I can put in a second city, put in another city. My screen is just I'm blank. Okay, I've locked everything. Call it J, J, M, J, I. Oh, you, know, you can, I don't know if there's a standard list. Um, okay. Okay. Good, and, and that's perfect. Okay. So you are entering this list of locations inside of the table of this configuration for hospital number 11. Okay. And that is useful for hospital number 11. But it's not useful for hospital number 1, 2, or 3 because they have their own configuration. So if you want to make a list of codes for this hospital, this is the correct way to put it. You put it in the table. For this, there is another option. At the bottom, can you click use codes from the file? At the bottom, click on use codes from the file. Okay. Uh, this one, you mean? Yes, that's right. That's right. We're not going to change this. I, I, I want to talk about it, but we're not going to do it. Um, as I just said, the table in the middle with Addis, Pima, Gondar is very valuable for hospital number 11, but it's not useful for the other hospitals because they're not in the other configurations, they're only in this configuration. But if we put the codes into a file, then we can share it around with all of the hospitals. 
Um, to do this in Argentina, in Argentina, they collect the patient disease, the patient risk factor, and so the national level makes a file that they update every year with the diagnoses and the names and the cities. So they manage that at the national level, and then they update that file to give to everybody so that all of the hospitals are using the same drop down lists. So in short, on the screen, you have three options. Option number one is no co-validation. So just free text. You know, like if you want to put the grams thing, you just type the grams in free text. That's option number one. Option number two is to create a nice standard list for this laboratory. And the third option from a data file from, from a file is to give everybody the same list, and then at the national level they can update the list. Is, is the difference between those clear? Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Um, so most countries do not use a lot of user-defined fields, but if they do, uh, you know, it is nice to have it standardized. Can you click on the second option here, use codes from the table below? No, 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 go back to, go back to code list. Click on code list. Correct, yes, click on code list. I want to do the... Oh, I didn't even remember it. That's a bug in here, Matt. I'm disappointed. It forgot the names of the fields. Uh, go, click on number two, use codes from the list. Click on where? Number two, use codes from the table below. Click on what the... News codes from the table below. Okay, this one, okay. Yes, yeah. There was a bug. Luna did not remember them. It didn't remember it because we didn't select the feature, but Luna still should have remembered. Okay, so just like those three cities again. You do that, and I'm going to make a note. I'm going to make a note for Adam, the programmer. Okay, Adam. Um, and uh, table from this program disappears if you change the option. Okay. Talk to them about that later. Okay, general, good. I'm going down. Okay. Now click on OK. Yeah. Good. There's a little bit of a, can you click on code list again? I just want to make sure it remembers. Click on code list. On code list. Code list. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's I, just want to make sure, I just want to make sure there's not a bug in this. Good, good, that, that, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, click on OK. And then click on OK and click on Save. Yeah. Good. And uh, let's go to data entry. Choose the last one. Yeah, that's fine. Let's say um, Save. Replace Yes. OK. So now go to Patient City. So now you can see those three options listed there. Yes. Okay. So just a few comments about these user-defined fields. Uh, or not only user-defined fields, but additional fields. There are the WhoNet predefined optional fields and the user-defined fields. So if a hospital wants to make their own list of fields, that's fine. Then you don't need those at the national level because it's very specific. Sometimes hospitals want a lot of strange things. They want the phone number. So uh, in that case, at the national level, it's not important, and they can do what they want. On the other hand, sometimes at the national level, there are things that you would like, like maybe the district or maybe the state, that you want everybody to do in the same way. Um, in that case, you and I can discuss what those additional fields are. We can make it as a predefined option. We can give them predefined lists. So you just need to decide. We make them very customizable. So the hospital can look they have exactly what they want. Some of what they want is very specific for them and is not important at the national level. 
There are other things that are important at the national level. Anything that's important at the national level, you want standardized as much as possible. So we discussed this earlier about the locations. I think it's very important to standardize inpatient and outpatient. Regarding the part of medicine, surgery, it depends. Some countries care about that, some countries don't. So you need to think about the data fields that you want to be standardized and try to introduce code lists and drop down boxes so that everybody is doing things the same way. Because if they don't do these things the same way, it's going to be difficult for you to analyze the data at, later at the national level. I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about for laboratory configuration. Are there any other questions about laboratory configuration from anybody on the call? Maybe Dawit and Gabri, Rafael. Mm, I don't know if Gabri is still in the call. He dropped out. And we don't know. Oh, we are okay. Yeah. And if you do have a question, make sure that you unmute yourself. Because right now we do not hear any questions. Okay, so it's it's uh that's more so far that's one hour twenty minutes, so we still have we still have plenty of time. Uh, we're now inside of data entry. Do you have, well, uh, I'll leave it up to you. Do you want to talk about data entry, data analysis, backend, or something else? Uh, maybe in the data entry, uh, uh, John. Hello, John. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, while we are entering the data. Uh, is there any mechanism to prevent duplication data? Uh, no, there isn't. Um, uh, so, as I mentioned, we have been modernizing CUNET in steps. Our first big effort was to replace uh, uh, Microsoft Visual Basic version 6 with Microsoft Visual Studio, now Visual Studio 2019. So our big modernization effort was modernizing the programming language. We finished that about two years ago. Uh, that, and last year for backlink. So, um, um, so we modernized the, um, uh, the programming language. In the last few months, we have modernized our data access routines. So we were using a very old technology called DAO. This is not important for you. But DAO is very, very old from the 1990s. And we started to see a bunch of compatibility issues. So for the last two months, we've been getting rid of DAO. That's another big modernization step. Another big modernization step that we are now completing is replacing Hunet's internal data structure. Internally, Hunet has always used, the Windows has always used a, a Microsoft Access. So the Hunet storage files that you are familiar with, the, the Hunet files that you receive, use an old data structure called DBase or DBF. DBA, DBF is ancient. DBF is from the 1980s. I selected it in the 1990s, it was old at that point. The reason I chose DBase was I did not want to choose DBase because even in 1995 it was already old. But we wanted to use Microsoft Access, and in 1995 Microsoft Access was extremely unreliable. This was Access 2. And when it with any large database, Access would crash. So my plan in 1995, when we switched from DOS to Windows, I wanted to use Access, but we could not use Access because it was just too, new, too many bugs, and it bombed, and people would, people would lose data. That's why we chose this, because even though it was old, it was reliable. So the external Hunet files are DBase. But in particular, Hunet has always used Access. The Windows version has always used Access. Uh, because if, if it has a problem, it's only a problem for the analysis. When you clean it, you start over, everything is fine. So in general, we're always using access. But also in the recent years, we have started to have trouble with access. Um, 
for even internal purposes because of compatibility issues. Because we were using access using an old technology. So it's two things. We're using old files with an old technology. A lot of these details are really not important for most of you on the call. So if I'm confusing you, please ignore what I'm saying. And I have a point. I'm getting to the point. So one of the things that we have done in the last two months is we have replaced TrueNet in panel access. We've replaced it with a new structure called SQLite. SQLite is similar to SQL Server, but it's smaller, easier, and more suitable. You do not need a database manager. Uh, so if you are if you are using SQL Server or Oracle or MySQL, you need a DBA. You need a database administrator. And Internet users do not have database administrators, so SQLite is a lot easier for that purpose. SQLite is more secure, and it's faster, and it's more modern. So there are many benefits to SQLite. Yeah. Now that I mention this, we have switched to SQLite internally, and but we continue to use the same Internet logic, which is called flat files. In Excel, everything is on one row. I have the patient name and date of birth and um, organism and specimen types and ampicillin. It's what we call a flat record. All of the information is on one row, just like you do when you go to Excel. When you do a flat file, the issue of duplicates is a problem <laughs> because each, each record is different. You have uh, this, this patient, this patient again, this patient again, this patient again. And because it is flat, who is not looking for repeats? So this is getting back to your question. When using our current flat approach, we have no simple way to look for repeats data entry. But now that we have SQLite, we have a new possibility. We can change from a flat file structure to what is called a relational file structure, which is much more modern. A patient has samples. Samples have isolates. Isolates have antibiotics. So you have a series of tables that are linked together. So with a relational database, it is much easier to look for repeats. So I've given you a very long answer. I probably should not have given you that whole long answer. But in short, you asked me if Renet can check for repeats. And with the flat data file structure, we don't have an easy way to do that. But now that we have switched to SQLite, flat is still a problem. But now that we have SQLite, we will have the ability in the future to switch to a relational data structure. There will be many advantages to a relational database structure. Please show me all of the people with the name Stelling. Please show me all of the results for John Stelling. Please show me all the isolates. So with a relational database structure, we can make that look more like a modern laboratory information system. A simple one, a simple one. I'm not going to do a full laboratory information system. But with a relation database structure, we can offer some of these tools about repeats and lookups. So it's a long answer to your simple question. Okay, so let's see. So repeats, first of all, repeats don't happen very often. You know, you enter the data on Monday, you come in on Tuesday, and you just continue entering the data. Um, so it doesn't happen very often, and if it does happen, I don't think it's going to impact your statistics. You know, if some, if the true number of E. coli is 100, and you type two of the E. coli twice, you'll have 102. It's not going to impact the statistics. Also, when you get to data analysis, Hornet is very well prepared to remove repeat isolates. Repeat isolates is different from, the, when you say duplicate, what I have in mind is they enter the same record twice. Entering the same record twice is a mistake. Somebody just entered the same record twice. When it doesn't have a standard way to get rid of that or to identify that. But what does happen very often, and this is proper microbiology, is the patient might be has E. coli on Monday and on Wednesday and on Friday. So they have the same organism, but it's a different sample. Yeah. Might be blood, it might be urine. Um, so I'm not going to call these duplicate because they're duplicate. It's a different sample. Yeah. 
an organism, but it's still a different sample. So we know there's a lot of nice analysis ways to remove these repeat isolates. If the patient has E. coli on Monday and Wednesday and Friday, I want all three E. coli in my database. They're not duplicates, they're different. Maybe they have the same organism, maybe they have the same resistance pattern. It's a different result. It's a, it is not a duplicate. But when I analyze the data, so I want all three E. coli in the database, but when I analyze the data, I just want to count that patient once for E. coli. So this becomes an analysis issue. So you mentioned about duplicate data entry. When you do duplicate data entry, the remove repeat isolates, it's going to get rid of those also. So if you enter exactly the same record five times by accident, uh, for analysis, so then I can remove them during the analysis. So long answer to, uh, to your very simple question. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, during analysis, it will not be a problem. But uh, for example, one patient uh, may provide urine, let's say two days, uh, but another time he will come and provide the same specimen, urine. Yes. Uh, from both specimen, the microbiologists they detected, let's say, E. coli. I don't know whether it's possible from urine E. coli. E. coli, they detected. So are you going to consider this data uh, as a duplicate, or I don't know? No, and that's my point, is that if the patient is E. coli on Monday and Wednesday and Friday, the data entry person should enter all three. The duplicates, they're not identical. These are different samples. They're different sample numbers. Maybe a different date, maybe a different sample type. Uh, they're, not, they're not identical duplicates. They're simply repeat samples. Um, so I want all of the repeat samples in the database. For example, um, you know, maybe the patient has E. coli on Monday that's very sensitive, but maybe they have E. coli again on Friday that's very resistant. I want both of them <laughs> so that I can look. Does the patient have, is there a mutation, is there a quality control problem? So, um, so there are two different issues here. Duplicate means they enter the same record twice. That's a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Enter the same data twice. Yeah, yeah. But if they enter, if they have the same organism many times, that's not a duplicate. It's, it's a repeat. It's a repeat sample, a repeat isolation. But I want all of the repeats in the database I'm not on the screen when black and if we log in, it's in back again. Um, so I want to have the repeat sent so I can see if there is more resistance, is it the same organism, uh, did the patient move? Maybe the patient had E. coli on Monday as an outpatient. Maybe they had E. coli on Wednesday as an inpatient. So these are not duplicates, they're, they're repeats. Um, and then so yes, uh, uh, and also the data entry person does it know? You know? The data entry person is entered and resolved. I don't want the data entry person to look to see if it was entered already, if the patient already had something. So uh, the data entry person, if they see 10 isolates for today, they should enter all 10 isolates. Later, when we get to data analysis, we do one that has a feature called first isolate per patient, most resistant, most sensitive. So if the patient is equal on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I want all three for data entry. For data analysis, it depends on what I want to do. Sometimes I only want one patient, sometimes I want all three. It depends on the analysis. So don't worry about the repeats, just whatever is on the data, whatever in the lab notebook, just type all of those results in. And then we can analyze it in the way that we want. Yeah, that's great. Uh, maybe uh, if you are interested to compute, uh, maybe the positivity rate, you know the denominator, uh, will be overestimated because of uh, one patient is uh, supplying uh, many specimens uh, during maybe one month or whatever. So, no, no, I, uh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's look at that. Click on exit. Click on exit. I want to go. No. To now, yes, I want to go to data analysis. So please leave the data entry program. Okay. Uh, leave data entry and go to data analysis. Yes? Yeah. 
Okay, we now go to data analysis. Click on analysis type. I want the first option, isolate listing and summary. Yeah. Click on isolate listing and summary. Click on OK. Go to organisms and choose all organisms. And just type the letters ALL and hit enter, all. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, go to data files. Okay. Data file, you mean? Yes. Data files, yes. Okay. And of course, we're still in hospital number 11. Hospital 11 is a copy of hospital number 5. Um, can, you see, at the upper right, you need to change to all files. You see where it says General University Medical Center? Change our so. files. All files. Yeah. And uh, find a real data file. Do you have a real data file? Well, that's Maybe, the, uh... the hospital number five. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, this is good enough for the purpose. Double click on that file. Yes, click on that file. Double click. Yeah. Click on OK. Coming. That's fine. Yeah. Click OK and begin analysis. OK, begin analysis and then uh, begin analysis. And wait. Okay. Uh, okay, as an example, I don't see any on the screen. I'm looking for repeats. I don't see any repeats on the screen. So I'm just looking to see if there's a repeated patient ID. So go, go down further. I know some of them are repeated. So go down further and please look for repeats. Um, Maybe yeah. we can start. I want to go down to see if there are any repeats. I don't see the same patient ID repeated. Well, it doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, good, good. Let's, see. Let's take a look at this one. Okay. See, no, no, I saw one. Um, okay, I see here. I see here. No, stop moving. <laughs> we have to stay on one screen. Um, okay, good, good. Stop right here. No. <laughs> when I say stop, stop. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Towards the bottom, I see a patient ID ending in 973. Close to the bottom, do you see 5973? Further down, five, further down, 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 stop, stop, stop. 5973. I'm looking at the last four numbers, the last four digits. The last four digits, 5973. Two more. Five, nine. Click on that. Yes, click on that. So look, here we have four results from the same person. Mm -hmm. you see this number appears four times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, but you see, it is different. The patient had a neurology, outpatient, emergency. So on January 25th, the person was in neurology. January 25th, the person was also an outpatient. On January 29th, at the 31st, they came back to the emergency room. So, so yeah, they're not identical. These are not duplicates. These are different samples. Uh, two of them are year, no, three, three of them are urine, one of them is a wound. So I do like to see the repeats. The different dates, the different specimen types, the different rooms. And look at the antibiotic results. Look at the ampicillin. You know, one of the first one is six millimeters, that's very resistant. So it looks like this particular question is endotoxic. One is very resistant and one is very sensitive. So this is showing that in this example, I do want to see the repeats. So I can see. No, no, no. John, John, maybe uh, this one, as far as I understand from the data, uh, the specimen type is urine, right? Uh, from urine, uh, the organism. Uh, 
it is the same organism actually yes but, uh, uh, the specimen number is the same you see yeah, and that can happen because sometimes, sometimes what you have is um, they'll have a gene, they'll see some different colonies, they'll process colony one, and they'll find it's an archaeus. They'll process colony two, and they'll find it's also an archaeus. So sometimes, because sometimes when they look at the plate, it looks like two different things. They say, "Oh, there's colony one. I wonder what that is." Oh, and colony two, that looks different when you look at colony two. And when they do that, usually it's two different species. Colony one is maybe Enarchaeus, colony two is E. coli. However, it happens sometimes colony one is Enarchaeus, colony two is also Enarchaeus. Uh, so in which case, they just found the same thing twice. Sometimes they'll have the same resistance pattern, sometimes they'll have a different resistance pattern. Um, but anyway, uh, this. So, I, so the point, I don't want to spend too much time on this particular example, but there are many cases where I want to see the repeats. I want to see the resistance characteristics, the species, the, the date, the location. So in many cases, I want to see the repeats. Now I'll click on continue. Okay. So uh, maybe during uh, creating the configuration, uh, are we going to include a repeat variable or I don't know, maybe there is uh the variable is so variable okay okay let's talk about this screen for example you see here on the left side of the screen it says enter caucus enter caucus species enter caucus this one the last one that's right click on the row how many isolates there are 81 isolates how many there were 67 patients. So this is an example of analysis where it counts it both ways. There were 81 isolates, that is a true number. There were 81 different isolates. But the 81 different isolates came from 67 different people. So these are denominators. The question is which denominator is more interesting to you? For epidemiological purposes, I'm, into, I'm more interested in the number of people. So if I'm interested in tracking disease, I'm interested in 57 people. On the other hand, I want to know how much work is the laboratory doing. The laboratory did 81 samples, so I wouldn't give them credit for it. So in terms of the laboratory workflow, in terms of the laboratory work, they did 81 enterococci. Those 81 came from 67 people. So this is an example of who is showing you both. Yeah. Can we now click on continue? We can also see in January it's counting the number of people. Uh, 67 people, 67 January. Now let's click on the feature called one per patient. Click on one per patient. Okay. So it says by isolate, meaning we're not just counting all of the isolates. It's counting all the isolates, it's counting the patients, it's doing everything. The second option is by patient. And we can see the next, in the second box, it says first isolate only. Yeah. And there's a uh, well, first isolate with antibiotic results. They're very similar. So now let's click on OK. OK, before that, John, before that, yes? uh, I want to understand uh, the term first isolate only. That means, uh, if the patient is uh, providing both urine and blood, uh, I don't know, in that context, how do you explain this one? Sure. So it, it also depends a little bit on which analysis you do, but it's, it's a patient had a urine on Monday and the blood on Tuesday, it would take the urine because the urine came first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one will be the considered. Yes. Uh, it was okay. If the patient had urine and blood on the same day, then you know it's at the specimen number and it'll use the one with the smallest specimen number. For example, if the urine is specimen number 10 and the blood is specimen number 11, uh, it'll use. So what it does is it takes the first isolate, uses the patient ID, um, it, uses, it uses the name of the country and the name of the laboratory and the number of the patient. So use the patient ID. And it takes, yeah, it takes the specimen date, and it looks at the specimen number on the specimen date. So click on, click on OK, and click on Begin Analysis.
So there are going to be 70, 67 people within our caucus. That has not changed. There were 67 people before. There are still 67 people. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. If you look for repeats, you're not going to find any repeats. I do take that back a little bit. Can you, put, you see where it says identification number? Click on the heading. Click on your identification number. On the column heading. That sorts it. Um, good. Sort. Click on that. Good. So, good. You see here now, you see, I look at those, no, no, I just look at once and stop. I click on identification number again. I want to go back to the beginning of the list. Good. Stop right there. Do not click on anything. You see one number three has a patient ID. Oh, no, that's a bad example. Uh, you see one number four? The last four numbers are 8013. No, at the top of the list. Uh, uh, this one? No, the one after that, that one, the, the next one, the next one. Yeah, 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 I got it. That's the same number twice. So yeah. the, there's the same version twice, but my point here is that it's two different species. You see, the first one this is, this is ABA, the second yeah. one is AE. So when I say first isolate per patient, it's the first isolate per patient per species. It's the first of the moonless, the first isolated marker, the first E. coli. Yeah. So when I say first per when I say first isolate per patient, I mean first isolate per patient per species. Okay, that's a small point. Now if I can continue. Okay. And we'll get the summary. Yeah, we'll, we will look at the role for Enterococcus. So good, you see, so now you see the number of ice is only 67. Because we have the repeats. So for some analysis, who that does by isolate, some analysis it does it by patient, some analysis it does it both ways, like the first one we did. And then using one per patient, we can remove the repeat isolates. So does that make sense? I hope that helps to clear things. Maybe uh, that's really pretty good. Uh, but which one is the correct analysis? That means sorry, one per patient. Can you repeat the question? Which one is the correct analysis? One per patient or one per isolate? I don't know which one it's is the correct one. Can you click on continue? What's my screen? Blank. Yeah. Okay. Um, click on the uh, click on options. Upper right in the corner, options. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, so here you see several of the options give you the choice, number of patients or number of isolates. Do you see that on the lower left and on the lower right? Yeah, number of isolates and number of patients. Okay. So, so, so you ask me which is correct, and the answer is it depends on what you're looking at. For disease tracking, more interesting is the number of patients. Okay. But if you're interested in the laboratory volume and the laboratory testing, the number of isolates would be more interesting for that. So in general, the number of patients is more interesting, and that's why the default is number of patients. But there are other cases where you want the number of isolates, and sometimes you do want both. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, just a simple example. Can you please open up Excel? Sorry? Can you please open Excel? Uh, I, uh, I can't no, hear you. No, 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 don't bother. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm opening up Excel on my computer. And regarding the Enterococcus example, if you remember, there were 80, what would you say, 81 isolates? From 67 people? Yeah. Okay. So if I divide 81 by 67, I get the number 1.2. Meaning that on average, people with enterococcus have 1.2. So that itself I find an interesting number. Like, if, well, let's take an extreme. If somebody has the real cholera, they usually only have the real cholera once. You know, if somebody 
from a diarrhea, you take, you take the sample, then you find it's the real color, and you treat them, and the patient goes home, and they're fine. So it is not very common to have vibrio cholera more than once from a person. So you might have maybe 70 vibrio cholera isolates from 70 different people. So on average, there's one isolate per person. On the other hand, for hospitalized patients with burns, with acinetobacter, Sometimes the person will have acinetobacter in their left arm and the right arm and in the blood and in the urine. So you end up with a lot of recondized thoughts. So on average, what you might find is that a person with acinetobacter, on average, maybe has three acinetobacter for every person. So this is an example where I want both the number of isolates and the number of patients so I can look at the average number of isolates per person. For community pathogens, usually it's just one isolate per person. But for hospital pathogens, sometimes you can have many, many repeats because the patient can be hospitalized for a few weeks. They can have it in urine and wound. So I, in that case, I want to know the number of isolates and the number of people so that I can look at my average isolate per person. So the answer to your question is it really depends. Most of the time, you will be more interested in the number of people. But there are examples where sometimes the number of isolates is more interesting or equally interesting. Okay, so I, I did that in Excel. I'm now going to go back to your computer. I just want to do the calculation. Okay. Okay. Um, this, um, your screen? <laughs> it's a little bit of Okay, I found your screen again. Okay, it's about 10 minutes left. My time is flexible, it doesn't have to be exact, but also I don't want to overload people. On these early calls, um, as I said, what I like to do in these early calls is really have this directed by your questions, because those are the most important questions. After we finish answering your priority questions, I have additional ideas about feedback reports and outbreak detection and optimization. So eventually I will have a more specific agenda to propose. But at this early time, uh, I think it's just more important to answer your questions. Um, we have spent a lot of time looking at data from one hospital. Um, on, on the next call, I think it would make sense to start looking at the national level. How can we do a national configuration, national benchmarking? Um, you know, some hospitals have user-defined fields that are not interesting at the national level. So, so we, we can make that a subject of maybe the next call. So we have about 10 minutes left, and it is flexible. Uh, do you or does anyone on the call have any questions? Okay, questions. Uh, this is a quick I would like to do, uh, just to start off this idea of feedback. No, no, don't go back into a minute. Okay. Let's click on hospital number five. I see hospital number 11, you can delete that later. Oh, open laboratory, yes. And then go to data analysis, but then go to quick analysis. Go to data analysis and do quick analysis. Yeah. And there's something here called the Linux Standard Report. Uh, I did this about 20 years ago. I like it, but it doesn't look great, and I want to improve the content. But it's quick and easy, and it's what we're doing now. So I'll show you the quick analysis uh, using the standard report. Click on data files. And I want you to find one of the data files from hospital number five. No, I, want... I don't want to use my data. Do, or do you have on your computer? Do you have access to any data from hospital number five? Uh, maybe we can use another hospital. That's fine. No, yeah. Let's use a different hospital then. Okay. So this analysis is going to be a quick introduction to our next session. Because so far today, we haven't looked at any of your data, and that wasn't the objective, but I want to 
the next, because we did data entry and configuration, the next time we can switch over to data analysis. Okay, stop right there, click on cancel, click on cancel. No, no, click on cancel. I want to leave this. Cancel. Sorry? Cancel. I want to stop. Click on cancel. Which one you want? Cancel. Cancel. Exit. Ah, uh, you want to exit? Okay. Yes, exit. Cancel. Correct, yes. Click on exit. Click on... Okay. We'll open laboratory. Click on file. Open laboratory. Yeah. You opened up hospital five. So we had hospital five open. But now you want to show me a different hospital. So you want to open up. Which hospital do you want to show me? Maybe uh, our uh, initiative TK yes. And that's why I had you leave, because I wanted to choose the correct laboratory. So we are now open, and that's the also the advantage of a national configuration. With a national configuration, we don't need to switch. So now we opened up the configuration for laboratory number one. Click on quick analysis. No, that's not correct. Click on exit. Okay, maybe the quick one. Yes, that's right. Click on analysis, quick analysis. That's now click on data files. Uh, maybe wait me for until I find. Okay, now please look for a data file from hospital, you know, you know, EPHI. Okay. Okay. And this time we can look at your file organization and your file names. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we are using a desktop, so uh, this is my personal computer. That's different. So can you just find one file from, from EPHI? Okay, thank you. Okay. You want the combined data or I don't know? No, okay. Uh, before you do anything, I just want to make a few comments. Uh, I see that you use the words Jan, Feb, March. I see that you use the word for the month. Yeah. I don't use the word for the month. I have a, I have a, uh, no, 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 don't, don't click on anything. Stop moving the mouse. I to use Jan, Feb, March, etc. I don't like that because it's hard to. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. It's a trick question. What is the first month of the year? This one is data belonging to December. The first one. Yes, no, no, but I have a general sense. I have a general question. Every year there's 12 months. What is the first month of the year? Uh, January. In alphabetical order, and yes, you were correct it is January, but not in alphabetical order. In alphabetical order, the first month of the year is April. So what I don't like about here, I think we have this in reverse. So let's see. Yeah, so here you see December is alphabetically before November. November is alphabetically before October. October is alphabetically. So what you have here is you see the months in alphabetical order. So if you look at the year 2019, it starts off with April. Okay. So I don't like to use the word January. I like to use the number 01, 02, 03. It just makes it easier to know, you know, which, if, if I give you 11 files, if I give you 11 months and which month is missing, it's easy to look at 1 to 12 to see that number 8 is missing. But when you in alphabetical order, it's a little bit inconvenient. So I do not recommend putting the word December. I recommend putting the number 12. Okay, that's a small comment. What's the change? Uh, one file is enough. Can you double click on December? December, okay. Yeah, just one, one is fine. Just one is fine. Click OK. Click OK. Yeah. 
then begin? Yes, begin. So you're going to see the current content of the standard report. So we use this to help with validation, finding problems. Yeah. So for example, what we have here is one month of data from one laboratory. It has 72 isolates. Yeah. And, and all of the data are from the year 2018. The new data go from December 3rd until December 31st. Good, I'm happy with that. People make typing mistakes on the dates. Click on where in the first sheet, A. Now go to section B, B data fields. Yeah. So here you can see that the first thing is 100% complete. Age 100% complete. The location type is usually missing. And we yeah. want, see location type is 1%, and that's because it's not relevant or it's not configured. You know, EPHI is not a hospital, so it's less relevant. So we can actually yeah. see what did you fill in? You know, the, the, the following fields have no data. The location is empty, data lactamase is empty. Uh, I can, and you look at male, female, 60% are female, 40% are male. Okay. I don't yeah. want to go into detail because we don't have time, but click on C organisms. Let's click on, I just want to go quickly through the rest of the sheets. Click on C organisms, and you see all of the data are from December. Yeah. Click on D and results. I uh, see so the most common organism is XXX, we know both. Here's some of the most important organisms like MRSA, ADA. Click on Microbiology Alerts, E. So it's telling me, it's telling us we have high priority alerts with E. coli resistant to any penum, a carbon penum resistant to E. coli and Tepsilla oxytoca. A medium blood, possibly SPL producer MRSA. This is the highlight from some of the most interesting findings. Click on F. It didn't find this one. Go to G. Laboratory configuration. I'm interested in this. G. Good. So here you can see in the middle, we have some 49 antibiotics. These antibodies that you see listed have no breakpoints. The reason they have no breakpoints is one of two reasons. Either the drug is invalid, like amoxicillin is not a valid drug. So when there are no breakpoints, that means there's some problem with configuration. Amoxicillin is not a correct drug. You should not be testing that. I also see, you see um, cephalotaxin. Cephalotaxin has no breakpoints. But cephalotaxin. Yeah. And is a valid drug, there's a different problem though. Cephalotaxin is supposed to be a 30 microgram disc. Yeah, exactly. It's a 5 microgram disc. So there's a configuration issue here. So, okay, that's enough for today. Can you go to H? Can we click on H? There's a tab H, data file configuration. Okay, um, that's fine. We'll even talk about that later. Go to I invalid data. Great, no invalid data. So this is going to be a good basis for our discussions next time about reviewing quality and configuration issues to make sure that everything is perfect. Uh, I do not want to focus on resistance and epidemiology and statistics yet. My interest is data cleaning and configuration and everything. Once the data clean and we understand the data, that's why we want to focus on epidemiology.